Hello there and welcome to episode number one of Liam's Fight Night Picks here on the STBX YouTube channel. I'm delighted to say that my guests this week are my two good friends, Sam Wilson from the SW Fight Hub and Jason Murphy from Jay's Fight Talk. How are we both boys? Good, thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Perfect. So this weekend is Destination Las Vegas for the Canelo Alvarez Edgar Belanga show. Uh, it is a four fight main card. But we're going to cover the five fights, including Stephen Fulton, who has been moved down to the prelims. So we'll jump right in, shall we, boys? Stephen Fulton has taken on Carlos Castro over 10 rounds. It'll be the first time we've seen Fulton since his loss to Inoue, which was around 14, 15 months ago, I think. And Castro has had 32 fights in his career, only lost twice, but that was in good company against Lewis Neary on a split decision and Brandon Figure. Figueroa, which was a stoppage, I believe, sixth or seventh rounds. So I'll come to you first, Sam. What's your opinions on this fight? Is it good good to see Stephen back, isn't it, after a bit of a layoff? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan, um, Liam, of, of Stephen Fulton. First off, uh, great to be here, mate. Liam's Fight Night Picks for episode one. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, love uh, love call boy Steph. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are judging him off the new A fight. You know, obviously his last fight out. Maybe rightfully so, but for me... You know, he showed so much silky skills on his way through. You know, the fight against um, Figueroa that he had, uh, I think he unified in that fight. Obviously, uh, his opponents uh, lost to Figueroa. Uh, many people remember that, won't remember, sorry, that he lost, uh, sorry, he beat Angelo Leo, uh, who's just had a huge win over Luis Alberto Lopez. He beat some good fighters, Stephen Fulton. Uh, so to write him off after defeat to Inoue, I think would just be silly. Um, I think this is nothing more really than a than a comeback fight for him on, on the, off the back of the Inoue fight. I know he's not too happy about being on the prelims uh, and that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it, it's good to see Stephen Fulton back. I think he's a good character. Uh, I believe he's up and weight in this one at 126. Is he obviously fought Inoue at, at Super Bantam? I think he's up yeah, at featherweight for this fight. Um, so yeah, another, another um, you know... Good fighter up at one two six. Maybe he's looking for that Angelo Leo rematch uh, for the IBF belt up at featherweight. I don't know, but yeah, good to see him back. Yeah, um, Jay. So obviously Carlos Castro, as we said, he's mixed with good company. His two defeats has come at the two times he stepped up. Do you reckon he could be catching Fulton at the right time after a layoff, moving to a new weight, or is it a case of it's a decent enough name for Stephen Fulton, but he's in full control of the dance, so to speak? Yeah, possibly. Firstly, can I just just echo what what Sam said? Thanks for having us. It's you know a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm honoured to be to be asked on to the first show, and it's about time that you uh, started doing some of your own content. So thanks for having us, man. It's a, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, pleasure man. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> initially when this fight was made, me as I always am, I was I was pretty underwhelmed. Um, but but I, I, as you said. Castro's only two defeats came in consecutive fights um, at, at world level or sort of elite level ish. Um, Fulton, yeah, a lot of people are only going to remember, you know, it's sort of a recency bias. He's had a long, long layoff. Um, he was handily beaten by 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 Inoue. It, it's a difficult one. I could see him just coming out and blowing straight through Castro with little or no trouble, but it all depends on what he's done um, over the last 12 months or so that he's been out. I don't mean that, like, he hasn't trained, but, you know, what type of training has he done? Has he improved? Yeah. He is going up into a different weight division. It's it's not a lot, but unless you've boxed, and, and, and you know, seven pounds, four pounds, it makes a massive difference when you've trained your body to, to get to a certain way, to feel a certain way, through through the rounds, carrying a little bit of extra um, weight, this could turn into a, a, a very tricky fight. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's funny, isn't it, Jay? Sorry, mate, just to butt in. Because um, Fulton lost to... Well, a new A beat Fulton so comfortably, like you just said. It sprung to yeah. my mind. It's like, But I believe that Fulton would have beaten any other of a new A's yeah, you know, oh, in yeah. recent opponents yeah. comfortably. So, like, Lewis Neary, who dropped him, had a new A in trouble... Marlon yeah. Tapales, who he fought for Undisputed, who, who, who pushed Inoue further than a lot have recently. So although they probably performed better against Inoue than Stephen Fulton did, I think that, you know, it's just the styles. I think Stephen Fulton would, would, would school a couple of those fighters. I've just yeah, had. probably. I mean, when the fight with Inoue was made, um, a lot of people were giving Fulton, 
you know, more than just a chance. There were people saying yeah. that this was the test and, you know, this was the guy to, to sort of take a new into into deep water. Um and and it was nothing like that. It, it was a pretty easy night's work for uh, for Inouye, but I I have to agree that we are Sam there that ninety nine point nine well probably a hundred percent of the people that Inouye's faced maybe other than Nanito Denair Fulton would probably be fairly handily. Um, so yeah, I'm intrigued. As I said, I was initially underwhelmed because you know Castro's not necessarily a household name. I, I, you know, I know he is and, and I've seen a couple of his fights, but he's not, he, he's probably not in, in a handful of fighters that I would have picked to want to, for me to want to see Stephen Fulton come back again. But we have to bear in mind that it is a comeback coming off his, you know, a, a, a pretty devastating defeat. I mean, he was, you know, it, it, all the interviews post fight for a couple of weeks afterwards, he was completely crushed. You know, he'd had his sort of, his, his, Invincibility taken away from him, and it must be hard for for, for someone's ego to, to take. I boxed myself and and got my ass handed to me, and it's crushing for your ego. So a million times above the level that I boxed at, I can only imagine what it did to his to his psychology. So yeah, there's a couple of contributing factors go into this. It's not just a case of turning up and and throwing leather. There's a lot of things psychologically. You know, is he going to be questioning his own chin and things like that? So yeah. As I say, I was initially underwhelmed, but I am intrigued to see what time, type of performance we get from Fulton. Yeah, no, agree with everything both you boys have said there. I think it's great to see Stephen Fulton back first and foremost. It's been far too long a lay layoff out of the ring. We don't know the full circumstances behind that. So we'll just close off this fight, boys. I'll get a quick prediction from both of you. I'll start with you again, Sam. Just a quick prediction for this fight. Yeah, uh, Fulton, you do. And you, Jay? Yeah, Fulton, UD, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you boys. I think Fulton's going to win this comfortably in the end. It'll be moving through the gears. It might be close for the first three or four rounds, but eventually his class is going to show and it fully expects him to win unanimously on points. So then moving on to the pay-per-view segment, boys. The first fight on this card will be Roly Romero against Manuel James. Over 10 rounds again. Roly's <laughs> looking to bounce back from, if we're honest, a devastating stoppage defeat against Isaac Cruz earlier this year. Of course, we saw Cruz then lose his belt in his first defence last month on the Riyadh season LA card. Um, his, both his defeats for Roley have been stoppages. He was also stopped by Tank back in 2022. So you can sense a pattern there when he goes in against a pressure fighter. He seems to come unstuck. In terms of James, he's 16-1-1. One one. He's on a four-fight on Beeson streak, but this is the first time he's been scheduled to go above six rounds. So you can see the caliber of opponent here you're bringing in for Roley. If you want to talk about a layup fight on this card, for me, this is a definition of a layup fight. I don't know what you think, Jay. Just give me a few thoughts. Yeah, I mean, it's all set up for Roley to come out there and look as spectacular as, as he can do. Um, the problem for me with Roley is I wish he was half as good as he says he is. <laughs> um, he's, he's fantastic at building himself up, him and his dad, I think. His dad's involved in, in some way, shape or form. I'm pretty sure I've, I've seen his dad in interviews. Talks a good game. Um I rated his performance against Tank. I think he was in that fight. It, it wasn't winning it, like he said, but he was in that fight until he wasn't and he got caught cold. The issue I've got with him is a bit um, similar to what we were talking um, off camera about, you know, UFC and stuff like that. And Sean O'Malley has a has a defeat on his record that he will not accept. And, and Rowley did a bit of that with Tank. He, he, he sort of wouldn't accept the fact that he got not cold, basically. I was winning the fight. It was a lucky punch, and it wasn't. Um, but he has got a very, very good skill set. I mean, he, he mixes it in some of the best gyms in in um, America, doesn't he? He goes in the Mayweather gym, and you know he's been in wild card. And I've seen I've seen a lot of sparring footage. I, I just like it to click for Rowley and him do what he's supposed to do at the weekend, which is ra railroad this kid. No disrespect to, to, to Manuel, um, but yeah, I, I see it as a as an easy night's work for him. Whether he makes it an easy night's work, that, that's down on him. Because again, Rowley's fairly inactive, really. He has yeah. long gaps between his fights, doesn't he? Um, he doesn't seem like he um, keeps the weight off. I'm, I'm not saying he does uh, a Ricky Hatton, but he certainly puts a fair bit of timber on him in between fight camps. So, again, similar to, to the last fight we spoke about, I'm intrigued to see what role he turns up. Because if he turns up, he should beat this kid fairly easily. But, 
you know, it's um, it's whether he does or not. Yeah, um, that was going to be my question to you, Sam, just on <coughs> Rowley's inactivity and his tendency to make some of his easier fights harder than they should be. Could that give James a chance? This is James's third fight of the year, OK, at a yeah. lower level. He's had two stoppages, but if Rowley is off, could that give James a bit of encouragement, give him a bit of momentum in this fight? Yeah, it's, you know, activity is key, I guess, but so is skill set and, and, and weapons in your arsenal. You know, Rolly's first time since, what, 2021 or something like that, that he's fought more than once in a year. Uh, obviously, he fought Isak Cruz, uh, as you said earlier, and got stopped earlier on this year. We've seen uh, Rayo Valenzuela uh, go and take the belt from, from Cruz on the Crawford Majimov card. I think Rolly's hiding a bit of demons at the moment, if I'm being completely honest, boys. I think... Uh, He's, he's he's lost what two two out of his last three with an absolute pathetic stoppage of Ismail Barroso in sandwiched in the middle of that, which was one of the worst stoppages that's that's ever been in existence. But you know, be here all day talking about that. I think that it's a complete layup. I think that you know, Rowley's people and his advisors and you know himself, they know that they need to talk's a great game, as Jay said. He is a good, you know, he he can sell a fight, you know, look at his build up with tank, they were pushing each other off the stage and and all that. I remember watching that, um, refreshing myself on that fairly recently. You know, the kid can talk. He can fight as well. 13 stoppages in, in 15 wins. Um, but, you know, there's no hiding the fact that he was brutally stopped by Tank. He was stopped by Isak Cruz. You know, he needs a rebuild. You know, I don't know how old he is, but he hasn't been in the game overly long. He's only had 17 or 18 fights. Um, yeah, so this, for me, I don't want to dress it up any more than than what it is. You know, Rolly Romero should be getting this kid out of there. Yeah, yeah he's supposed no. to win. It's, it's, it is, um, for me, it is the definition of a handpicked opponent. We're going to talk about it later on with the main event in Canelo. But this is, for me, Roly Romero. Go out there, get a stoppage, and then I'm sure he'll be pushed back in the direction of the world title quite quickly. So, prediction from me, boys, is that Roly gets a stoppage, I would say, between the fourth and sixth rounds. Jay, your thoughts? Uh, I think he's going to make a hard night of it. I think he gets a points decision. Yeah, I've got a rock. Rolly late. I think he'll stop, stop him. him. Yep. Yeah, no, it's... I went four to six, yeah. So four to yeah. six. You've gone late. I've gone points. Yeah. Okay, Maybe boys. Give me like eight, eight or nine or something like that, I'll take. <laughs> right, boys. We're on a roll if you get that, Sam, this week. On you the rolly, on the rolly. Rolly on the rolly. <laughs> <laughs> Always bet responsibly, guys, watching this. Remember that one. Uh, we will yes, move on probably. to Caleb Plant and Trevor McCoombie. This is over 12 rounds. Plant's first fight in 18 months since we saw him in a fantastic fight of the year Caleb contender Plant. against Benavides. Love Very him. close on the scorecards. Um, for McC McCoombie, he's 28 and 0 with 21 stoppages, but <laughs> similar to the last fight we spoke about. This is his first fight at 12 rounds. He had a few 10 rounders, but this is the next step up for him. Um, so start with you, Jay, again. Um, for me, both of Plant's losses against Canelo and against Benavides, he was competitive and in the fights. He wasn't completely steamrolled by Canelo and he was certainly giving Benavides questions to answer, especially through those middle rounds. Would you say that, obviously, this is him getting himself back in the shot window <coughs> off the layoff with what we know is happening within the super middleweight division? Would you see him as a future world, world title challenger again? 100%. I mean, Caleb Plant's pedigree... He's second to none. I mean, he's he's gone through the elite amateur setup. Um, he, he's done it all right through the through the pro ranks. You know, fought for NABF titles, fought for world titles. As you said, in his two sort of defeats, um, or certainly challenges at the the very top level, um, he was very very competitive. I hate saying that about fighters. It's like you're patronising them when you say they're competitive. But you know what I mean. The majority of Canelo's opponents get blasted out of there. Benavidez's opponents get blasted out of there. Benavidez was there, right in the pocket. Um, you know, never takes a backward step. Um, can hit very, very hard. He's very sometimes too brave for his own good. There's sometimes where I wish he'd back off um, and regroup and he'll just stay and sort of fight through the fire. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, this is a running theme, but again, I'm intrigued to see what type of Caleb Plant turns up. It's like a bloody, uh, um, a he's like Sherlock Holmes, Holmes here, he's intrigued about you everything. Can't box, you can't box unless you've had a minimum of 12 months off, but yeah, I think Caleb Plant, yeah, the kid, his opponent's undefeated, but his opponent hasn't really boxed anyone of any note. 
again, as we've just spoke about on, on the bout before we roll it, I'm expecting this to be um, implanting his flag again and, and letting people know who he is and he's back sort of thing. So I'm expecting him to come back with a vengeance. I follow him on all his socials. He's been active in terms of putting out plenty of training content. Um, he seems to have really got the bit between his teeth and um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, of all the fights on the card, I know it's not a, a 50-50 fight of, of, of any way, shape or form, but I'm excited. I do get excited when I see Caleb Plant. I'm, I'm just disappointed that they're not, um, they never made the Charlo fight because for me, that's the fight that I wanted to see him in, especially after yeah. the... Uh, Slap. Charlo just can't keep himself out. You're talking about Jamal Charlo. Yeah, can't keep, yeah, himself, just out can't keep himself out of trouble. That's <laughs> no, the... no. He slapped him, didn't he? He slapped him yeah. at one of them events. It, yeah, one, it's a... one event backstage. One, I yeah. think he grabbed Plant's beard or something. So Plant. Yeah, to be fair yeah. to Caleb Plant, he's about that life. He's never, he's never short of a little ruckus. Oh, the Caleb. Thing, no, he's not. He, he's, he's ghetto. And he came up with a lot of them. A lot of the elites now, they, they were all in the elite sort of amateur set up together. Uh -huh. um, Belanga and, I want to say Belanga and Plant know each other from, from the amateurs. Yeah, into they were trash talking each other as well. Yeah, they were friends. They're friends, aren't they? Or they were friends. And, no, they're they, not anymore. They're trash talking each other recently. They've got to do that though, haven't they? Because it's a potential yeah. fight now. But I know there is footage. Out, I've seen footage of them together when they were kids um, at, at international tournaments. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for Caleb, you know, to see what kind of performance he can put on and then what he says afterwards. Um, yeah, he's you know, always good on the fight. Fight. He's always fight. good value. Yeah, always. He's never in a dull fight, is he? Yeah, that's, that's going to be my question for you, Sam. So Caleb, former IBF champion at 168, as we know, before Canelo came along and unified and conquered everyone within that 12-month period. We've got a date now for Vladimir Shishkin and William Skull. I believe it's the 15th of October, so not too far away at all. Would you say Plant's probably in the best position to get the first shot at a winner of that fight, being a former IBF champion? I believe he's ranked in number three or number four still with them. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to say so. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with if Canelo gets through Belanga, if the belts are going to fragment due to his mandatories. I think Christian and Billy's up there. Um who else? Diego Pacheco is obviously right up there as well. You know, super middleweight's gaining a little bit of life again. Uh, you know, as for Caleb Plant, you know, couldn't be any more complimentary. I've been watching him on Carl Frotch's show. Uh, Frotch, interviewed him the other day. It was absolutely brilliant. You know, a lot of people need to remember about Caleb Plant. Y yes, he can bang and he's a, he's a good boxer, but he's got a granite chin as well. You know, Canelo did stop him, yes. And it's actually, funny enough, Canelo's last, last stoppage victory. Um, yeah. But Caleb Plant is one tough man. You know, he's only been stopped the once, only lost twice to, you know, two. You know, I'm, I'm yet to call Benavidez elite, but he's he's, he's, he's getting very close. Yeah, and yeah. Obviously, obviously, Canelo are absolutely elite. And, and you know, people forget as well, just because Canelo stopped him in the 11th round, but Caleb Plant gave Canelo one of his toughest nights work in, in, in a very long time, really, um, you know, in, in that fight. So, yeah, big, big fan of Caleb Plant. Looking forward to seeing... Uh, in back in the ring, and yeah, I'd probably say that he's uh, he's going to be there or thereabouts, isn't he, for a world title show after this? I would say I'd like so. to see him and uh, and Billy fight. I, I'd, I'd like. It's to a see great him fight. It's a great, great fight. fight. It's a great fight. If, um, right, boys, we'll get a quick prediction from you both for this one. So, start off with you, Sam. How do you see this one going? Yeah, plan will stop him in six. I think in this one, they will get rid of him within six. Yep, Jay. Levels. Four. Four. Before. Yeah, I'm similar, I'm similar to you, Sam. Um, Plant's going to come out and show his world-class world levels. It's just whether it takes him a few rounds to find his rhythm or if he can get into it from the off. But if we're seeing past round seven, round eight of this fight, I'll be very surprised. Yes. So we'll move on, boys, to the chief supporter tonight, a fight of the two older statesmen of, of this card, shall we say. We've got Estra Landry, Lara and Danny Garcia over 12 rounds for the WBA Middleweight title, Danny Garcia's first fight since the majority decision win back in July 2022. Ironically enough, he's still fought more in the last five years than Lara, despite the fact he's not fought since 2022. Um, Lara, 41 years old, he's 33 and three, only the second defense of a belt he won back in 2022. He's also been out already this year. He fought on the um, Tim Zeus and Bastian Fandora card back in March. Uh, it's kind of for me this fight. I don't know what to make of it. At some point, yeah. <laughs> Lara's age is going to catch up with him and his inactivity. But 
Garcia, okay, 36, the younger man by five years in this Not a middleweight. He's coming yeah, up look, a lot. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Liam, carry on. So, I just yeah, I'll throw it over to you. I mean, Garcia is known to us UK fans for absolutely dismantling Amir Khan. I think that was back in 2011, 2012. So, yeah. 12 years I ago just, now, he's at his peak. So, yeah, thoughts on this fight, boys? I'll start with you, Sam. Yeah, I, I, I just don't... I don't understand the fight. It's been spoke about for like the last 18 months or so now. Uh, uh, Lara against Garcia. Like, you know, Danny Garcia's fought once in the last well four years. It. Yeah, exactly. He's fought once in the last four years. Took one fight at 154 where he weighed 152 and a half pounds. And then against Benavidez Jr. And then uh, he's stepping up to 160 now with no real pedigree. You know, we don't know how he's going to look at the weight. Like you say, Liam, we've got a 41-year-old. There is Landy Lara, who's knocked out Michael Zarafa in his last fight. We've seen him recycled, you know, loads of times. And then his last fight before, like, he fought Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Again, no disrespect to Spike, but that's not like a world championship defending run. So he's just kind of hanging around and, and, and doing what he needs to do. You know, Danny <laughs> Garcia is for who's who, to be fair to him. One thing about Garcia, he's got a filthy left hook and he's got a granite chin. So, you know... Can, can he land a left hook on Eris Landy Lara at 41? You know, maybe, but you have to remember as well, Eris Landy Lara has a granite chin as well. He's been in with the likes of Canelo Alvarez and, and people like that and never been stopped. You know, Danny Garcia has been in with Spence and, you know, uh, Porter and so, people like that. So, yeah, you know, for me, I don't want to be the that guy, but, you know, ultimately I'm going to be that guy. I apologise, guys. I think it would be a bit of a snooze fest. You know, I don't think anyone's going to, you know, there's going to be any drama in this fight or anything like that. It just doesn't appeal massively to me, the matchup. Has, oh has 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 Lara been? And again, this is going to be my tagline. With the utmost respect, I'm going to be disrespectful. As skilled as Lara is, unless you are a complete boxing nerd and purist like us three, he's never in an exciting fight because yeah. he is. Yeah, he's skillful. The Cuban style: hit and not get hit, long range, pitter patter. Um, stays out of range, will come in and score and get out of there. Yet he's got a granite chin if he needs to. Danny Gar, I don't believe it, for, even though he's 41. Danny Garcia, if there were both, if it was at 154, for example, I would think that the matchup would be closer. Even though Eris Landilara is 41, he's not got that much mileage like we know. He don't fight that often. He's had this title since 2022. Danny Garcia has not boxed since flipping before COVID. Twenty twenty two Garcia was his last fight. I've got, I've got to agree with Sam. They're just going to be rusty. Um, Danny going to be a glorified sparring match. This one, yeah, he's got no momentum. His timing's going to be off. He's carrying way more extra weight than he's used to. Like Sam said, he made one fifty two and a half to make one fifty four, and I'm pretty sure he kept his tracksuit bottoms on when he got weighed in. He's nowhere near a middleweight. You've got to grow into weights. Taking four years off and eating cake is not growing into a weight. I'm not saying he can't make the weight. He'll be able to make 160. He might have to, to boil down a little bit. He's not carrying. You will, we'll see. I think Danny Garcia is going to look really fleshy. Um, it's not a fight I'm overexcited to, to, to watch. It's not a co-main event for me, but unfortunately, it's the only two other names on either side. Um, of the fight card other than, other than the main event itself. So it's, it is what it is. But um, yeah, I, I have to agree with Sam. I think it's going to be a long, drawn out 12 round snooze fest. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting fight when it, I mean, it's been discussed for years. I was hoping it had kind of died down and gone away because it had all gone quiet the second half of last year. Both Garcia coming back and Lara being interested in fighting him. But it's here now. Look, we're going we're gonna to be sitting and watching it on Sunday morning and with whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah watching it um so boys before we move on to the main event i'll get a quick prediction from you both before i give my view so jay are we predicting lara to um win this on points yeah 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 sorry i was i was just thinking then because i was going to give a draw you know i was going to okay. give a draw because i could see a knock you know garcia catching him and knocking him down yeah but losing most of the round and it sort of but i think it'll be yeah, I think they're just. I think it's just going to be something like one fifteen, one thirteen to to Lara. I think it's going to be competitive, close. But I think Lara's got the edge in reach and speed and skill set for me. Um, Danny Garcia is a lot rougher and maybe punches a little bit harder. But at middleweight, we don't know. We've never seen him box at middleweight. This is his middleweight debut, I believe. Is it? I, I don't yeah. know if he's boxed at one sixty. Has he? He hasn't. Has he? No. 
Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for Lara in a um, a tight points, a unanimous but but very tight. Okay, Sam, and your thoughts as well, mate. Similar similar to what yeah, yeah. I think Lara will win a an eight four kind of fight. I don't anticipate any knockdowns, anyone being tr- in trouble or anything like that. I think Lara will just have enough. I think yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not enthused by it really. To be honest, I don't think it's a chief support to a a big uh, big Vegas fight night for Canelo. No, I agree with what you've always just said in terms of it not being a chief support, but I'm going to go against the grey and I'm picking this to be my upset of the night. I predict we're going to hear Anthony you, Danny Garcia on points. I just, I'm not sure. I can't put my finger on why. I think possibly maybe Lara's age is going to catch up with him. It's a big jump up from Garcia from where he's been, but picking this as my upset of the night and Danny Garcia to hear Anthony you via a majority decision. Yeah, I think Lara's age will catch up with him if he fights anyone with a pulse. That's my... Yeah, That's my opinion on it. All right, boys, we will now move on to the main event. We have Canelo Alvarez with his annual Max- Mexican Independence Day fight this year taking on Edgar Belanga. It's for the WBA, WBO, WBC and Ring Magazine titles. Um, up at 168, obviously the IBF has been stripped from him, stripped from him and has become vacant. So it's a unified rather than an undisputed fight. I mean, that's how I kind of feel about this fight. It's another hand-picked Canelo opponent. For Langer, for all the talent he has and for the fact that he could one day go on to be a world champion, we've not seen it yet. And whilst he could be the fighter that unlocks Canelo and is the one that causes a seismic shock around the world, I just don't see it happening. Canelo's too streetwise, too smart for me. So, Jay, I'll start with you, mate. Is it what is Canelo doing? Is he getting to the point of his career now where he's just cherry picking his opponents and we have to accept these fights? I mean, what can you say about it, mate? It's just cashing checks, taking the easiest fights possible for the most money possible. He's doing what Canelo does. He's at a, he's of an age now where his legacy is pretty much secure, you know, in terms of he's a multiple weight world champion. He's pretty much boxed a who's who in terms of resume, but over the past four or five years, other than, you know, fighting Bivol and losing and then forgetting to rematch him and then avoiding Benavidez like the plague, um, he's done what he does best. He's hand-picked an opponent. He's going to sell it, ram it down everybody's throats that it's a a 50-50 fight, which is what we've been saying. I've watched a couple of interviews in Spanish, a couple of interviews in English, and... I, I, you know, Canelo's trying to make us all believe that this is a, you know, a, a close fight. But I would be absolutely dumbfounded if on Sunday morning, Belanga, you know, I'm not saying he's not going to... It'd be one of the biggest shocks in, in boxing yeah, history. I'm not even exaggerating by saying it that. Would, it would. I'm not dissing Belanga's skill set. And I'm not saying that he doesn't give majority of 168s in the world <laughs> a hard night or beat a majority of them. He's not boxed anybody near the level of Canelo, um, and we'll and we'll see that on Saturday, Sunday morning. Um, it, I think the, the, there's a massive disparity in skill set, um, and I think you know it, it's just Canelo, isn't it? He's doing what he wants to do. He's refusing to take the Saudi money unless they give him two hundred million. So he's picked yep. the best of a bad bunch. Yeah. Um. No. It's. Is is that, and we're getting kind of fed up with saying the same things about Canelo, aren't we? He's went on this incredible run to unify at 168, Sam. He beat Callum Smith. He beat um, wow. Caleb Plum and who was Billy Joe. And Billy Joe, sorry, of course, Billy Joe Saunders to unify the division. And he even got a mandatory out of the way within this 12-month period. He just absolutely <laughs> dominated. But we haven't seen a stoppage from him since 2021, Sam. Um, can he afford to coast the 12 rounds here and just, you know, put some manners on the Langer and you know, we see a 118, 110 yeah. kind of fight. You think he needs to go uh, for this stuff? Absolutely not, Liam. I'm going to have a bit of a rant here if I'm going to be completely honest about Canelo and his level of opposition. So uh, I, I don't hate the Jaime Munguia fight last time out. Like, Munguia had a largely padded record, but he was undefeated. He had all these fights and he, he knocked out John Ryder. So, okay, fair enough. Like, I don't hate that one. Jamel Charlo last September... No idea why that fight was. Before that, you had a John Ryder fight. You know, before that, it was a 58-year-old Golovkin. You know, <laughs> since Dimitri Bivol, he's been he's been completely safety first. Canelo, his, his mindset's completely changed. And, you know, okay, fair enough. He took a bit of a, you know, 
when he got schooled by Dimitri Bivol that night, let's be honest. Looking back on it, that's no, uh, you know, at the end of the day, no Bivol is, in that, is there? Yeah, no disgrace at all. But Bivol is elite. But, um, you know, we can't still be spouting the same thing as we're spouting about Canelo all these years ago when he's running through the top opposition like he, like he did to become undisputed as super middleweight. Edgar Belanga, he is what he is. He had 16 or 17 first round knockouts in a row, started to step up the opposition, looked like he had no power, no pop at all. Uh, you know, got his first knockout in five or six fights against Potty McCrory last time out. You don't go from fighting, you know, no disrespect to Potty McCrory at all. He had a great little run. Uh, he did, but, um, you know, he's cannon fodder to Belanga in that last fight. You don't go from fighting Jason Quigley, Podrick McCrory, um, and then so, I can't even remember who it was before that, but, you know, to, to Canelo. I just don't understand the match, but don't know why it's happened. I would have been saying the same thing if it was Chris Eubank Jr. as well, and we knew it was between them two at the end, but, you know, I, I'll watch it because I'll watch anything. I'm, I'm a boxing nut, but, you know, I don't know if you can tell or anyone watching will get the point. I'm really not enthused by this Canelo versus Black matchup at all. It's, Rant yeah, over. It, <laughs> it, is, it is a shame. There's so many fights we want to see for Canelo. We want to see him take on Benavidez. We want to see him. Do we want to see him give Bivol a rematch? Maybe not with what we know Bivol can, has gone on to do and what he's likely to do. Benavidez. In uh, uh, Billy. Uh, yeah. Even Diego Pacheco, you know, Pacheco would bang Did out Belanga. Pacheco yeah. would nail Belanga, I'm telling you. What I would like to see from Canelo is Canelo fight somebody that we want to see him fight. That's all I'm yeah. asking. I don't think that's too much to ask. The pressure's on after this, Jay. The pressure's on for next May. Well, he has he's to got fight nowhere somebody. To go. Yeah, he's got nowhere to go. He has to either fight and Billy, uh, step up and rematch Bivol, or fight Benavidez. Oh, we don't. I, me personally, I don't want to see him fight anybody else outside of that three. There is nobody that I would be interested. I'll watch. I'd watch him fight a tramp over a bag of chips. But what I'm saying is, to get my juices flowing, um, he's got to fight somebody who has a chance of beating him. And I'm not saying Belanga. Everybody's got a chance of beating everyone. You know, there's a puncher's chance and blah, blah, blah. But we all know that this is set up for Canelo to slam dunk on Cinco. It's not Cinco de Mayo, is it? What do they call this one? It makes Mexican independence. You know, um, but I'm just, I'm bored of him now. I'm bored of the Canelo um, that he's that morphed into. Most Bivol Canelo is, is not, not it. Yeah, that's Right, boys, we've gone. We've sort of gone on a bit of a downer about the main event, so let's bring it back round with our predictions, please, boys. I'll start with you, Sam. How do we see this main event going? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we're going to get the first Canelo Alvarez stoppage since Caleb Plant in 2021. I'd be gobsmacked if he didn't. And to be honest, if he doesn't stop Edgar Belanga, then you know I wouldn't. Don't blame him for not fighting uh, Dimitri Bivol or. or... Yeah. I would say Benavidez. I think Canelo beats Benavidez, to be honest with you. But yeah, if he doesn't stop Belanga, he's definitely losing a step. Everything Edgar Belanga does, Canelo does better. I yeah. believe he'll get him out of there in, 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 in six or seven rounds. And I'd be surprised if he didn't, if I'm being honest. Same same feelings from yourself, Jay? Exactly the same. I was going to say between five and seven. Um, I just think he'll, it'll be close for a round. And then Canelo will just turn on. And he should be able to... To stop Belanga, there's nothing I've seen from Belanga in any of his fights that would make me think he's got anything to, to beat Canelo other than catching him cold and knocking him out in first round, which I do not anticipate. So, yeah, um, round six. Yeah, again, boys, similar similar um, sentiments from me. Nothing we've seen from Belanga suggests he's going to shock the world and catapult himself into superstardom. Canelo needs a stoppage. It's not a case of we want to see a stoppage. We need to see Canelo stopping this. We have to. We have so to I'm... listen. People will get bored. It's not just the likes of us who are boxing sort of nuts and nerds that watch every single fight that are getting pissed off with Canelo. But the casual fan, they're not. It, people are idiots. Do you know what I mean? Because you know what do we pay twenty five quid over here for yep. pay per view? We're talking sixty seventy quid over there. You know, and then there's people that are spending hundreds, maybe thousands, to go watch him as well. You can only sell. You can only sell shit for so long. You know what I mean. You can roll it in glitter and put rubber band, you know, fancy balls around it, but it's still a turd. Do you know what I mean? And and, and we're getting sold shit here by Canelo, Canelo and his and his team. Um, it, it's not something we want to see. As Sam said, he has to get this kid out of the way, 
and call for somebody that we actually want to see him fight. I would love nothing better than to be left shocked at his call out. You know, grab the mic and call call them all out. Benavidez, you're next. Or because uh, Benavidez will be there, I'm assuming. He's going to be sat ringside, no? I assume so, mate, but yeah, so just bring it back around, boys, so we can wrap this up. I agree. I believe Canelo will get a stoppage between four to seven for me. I think yeah. a few, few rounds, but Langham may cause him a few issues in the first round or so. But as soon as Canelo flicks the switch, that will be it for me. So there we go, boys. We have summed, we have rounded up this fight card. We've done our predictions. Episode number one is in the can for Liam's fight night picks. Big thank you to my guest, Sam Wilson from SW Fight Hub. Be sure to follow him at SW Fight Hub over on X. And a big thanks to the main man, Jason Murphy, down there at the bottom. Be sure to follow him on X at Jay's Fight Talk. My X handle is at Liam, Liam underscore Tully9. Would be great to up the followers. Looking to get towards 500 in the next couple of months. So please, any help with that would be much get appreciated. In get involved in the comments below. Let us know your thoughts. And I will see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Len. Cheers. Stay tuned.